You know, low-key, maybe high-key, every single day I'm falling more and more in love with this world. Like, it's just feeling so cozy. But problem. So you see, in between episodes, I was walking around the world here just seeing what's going on, making sure everything's good. Then at one point, I walked over here near this giant orb, the spear, trying to figure out what's going on and... And listen. A bird. There's a bird inside of this orb. Welcome back to the guide, everybody. In today's banger of an episode, we'll be heading over to the desert and diving into the past. We're going to come out of this thing with tons of treasure and a whole lot of archaeology, too. Finally, this is actually an episode, a project that I've been wanting to take on for a long time now, so I'm pretty excited. But what in the world is going on up here? I know for sure I'm... <gasps> no, 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 burb. How in the world are you? You demon. You monster. Stop staring at me. No. Wait, what is that? The Bonzo incident from episodes ago. You said you cursed Bonzo when I went over to the jungle. You were in the background somewhere in the episode in you. You were in the background and jealous that you couldn't come. So you cursed Bonzo with the cookie bill. And you demand more cookies. What in the world? Well, a dimensional, time-shifting, space-evolving demon. Didn't have that on the bucket list today, did I? After the Bonzo incident you're claiming, I don't really trust you. No chance you're getting anywhere near the house or any of the supplies that I need for archaeology today. So archaeology, a little bit earlier on in the series, when we were going out into the ocean and finding these bad boys right there, you might remember that we talked a little bit about the archaeology system. Speaking of sniffers, the sniffer crop operation. It's exploding. It's so successful. Look at all these flowers. If you can remember from the archaeology stuff that we already talked about, the number one supply that you're going to need is a brush. But by the looks of this brush, it's not doing too hot. I might need a new one. Camelotl, Camelotl, today could be the sweet dear day that you finally have a new friend. Because we're headed off to the desert and we're going to look around quite a bit, I'll bring the saddle. Maybe if we're lucky, we'll find a second camel and could make a farm. And finally here, for supplies, there's finally, at a long last, a chest, an item of different thing that we're going to want to craft to bring with us. If I make one of these things, my inventory will be expanded. But here's the thing. To make one of those things, I'm going to need an ender pearl, which I know I have. Just, just not over here. And a little bit of blaze spotter as well. I'll meet you there. Nah, back over at OG home sweet home. This dear sweet place, I miss it. It's been so... It's been so long. I guess it's been that long that the place, the house has grown. It's grown dilapidated and old and dusty. Oh, wow. It's been, I guess, centuries since I've been here. Anyways, I think I need a little bit of copper. Wow, that's actually low-key, high-key, kind of sad. Anyways, I don't have time for sentimental today. We're going to need to make an ender chest. <laughs> and then I'm going to need to take that texture back off. In Minecraft, early and late game, there is an easy way to literally double the size of your inventory. And that's going to be called the ender chest. Now, the ender chest is a different kind of chest than a normal chest. If you mine this thing without silk touch, it's going to break apart. So that means 100% silk touch pickaxe all the way. To avoid any unwanted disasters today, I'm going to keep that boy inside of the ender chest. Now, when we put something inside of the ender chest and break the ender chest, everything that's inside of the ender chest will stay inside of the ender chest. For a system like the archaeology system that tends to kind of clog up the inventory, and for a system like the Desert Pyramid that has lots of different loot, expanding the inventory is kind of a must. To be honest, taking it down without an ender chest, well, I'm bad. Alright, and with that inventory effectively doubled, it's off to the desert for me. Hey, uh, by the way, I figured I would stay right here before it gets too late in the episode. If I sound a little bit different today, it's because I... Well, it's because I feel a little bit different, alright? <laughs> <laughs> Very Minecraft YouTuber like your handsome lad right over here. The average day consists of staying inside. I decided recently to go outside and switch things up a little bit, see what it's like, and I, I don't recommend it. I came back sick. I got, I got sick. I'm never going outside again. Against all odds, miraculously, just a tiny bit of time later, and here we are over a desert sweet desert. So I think there's only one spot that our archaeology adventure can begin today. I haven't really explored this desert too much at all, but I have explored this desert over in this general direction. There's something beautiful and very, very pyramid-shaped. One of Minecraft's oldest structures looming right there in the not-so-distant distance. So I think there's only one thing we can do. At dawn, just like the ancients, it's time we get to pyramiding. 
tomorrow. Not only is the desert one of Minecraft's oldest biome, but inside of this biome, probably because it's so ancient, it actually has some pretty old structures too. Even better for us today, recently in the 1.20 updates, as I'm sure you all know, pretty recently a lot of these things got updated. The desert pyramid is definitely one of them. But wait, actually, there's more. Because of the structures that generate inside of the desert, like we're talking this structure right here, the pyramid, the village, and even the well, the desert is actually one of the best biomes when looking for treasure and loot in the entire game. Like, if you want to find diamonds easily, this could be the spot. You want to find some merchants to import back to your base? Yeah, yeah, this is definitely the spot. And armor trim. Oh, I hope today is the day. Armor trim, sweet armor trim. So this old man right here with his ominous arm. Good. Um, oh no. Oh no, that's absolutely terrible. There's a bomb inside of this thing. And something set the bomb off. Possibly ruining all the loot. Oh no, oh no. Oh, this is absolutely terrible. The desert pyramid. I didn't even get to dramatically open this thing. You gotta be careful because inside of this thing. I'm so sad. I'm so sad about this. Inside of this thing, there's loot at the bottom, but it's also a dark room and mobs can spawn there. Very rare. And blow it all up. Ugh. I hate everything. My life is miserable and it, it is meaningless, devoid of all meaning. All right, well, when you explode the bottom room of the desert pyramid or something else explodes the room for you, it will maybe end up looking something like this. There may be some coal there, so touch it, bring it back home, I don't know. Uh, but usually there could be armor trim, so we treasure an armor trim. I am so miserable right now. Beyond words, misery. It's all I feel. All right, well, uh, lads, I didn't really get to properly introduce this structure to you, but the front of the structure, this time around, it was buried. Sometimes it could be buried, sometimes it could not be. You're gonna want to excavate the front and slide into the front instead of jump in through the top, because if you didn't notice, inside of this thing, a couple different stories, and without any torches in here, it could get pretty dark. Mobs could spawn. We set a goal right here and now. By the end of the episode, find at least one more desert temple, even if I have to go a thousand trillion blocks so I could actually show it and maybe get some trim to it. Now, floor plan wise, once we crack into this coal boy, we don't actually have too much going on. If we move into the main floor, we'll have the shape at the middle, just like I did. But hopefully prior to an explosion, you will break your way down into this thing and get the loot. We'll talk more about that later. When you enter this thing, if you run right in for the loot, you might miss it. But there's actually two wings off to the left and right. If we move over, we'll find a small spiral staircase and then more sand that is flooded in the structure. If the structure is buried, you're going to have to do a lot of digging. If your structure is a little bit less buried, like this side over here, your spiral staircase goes up to the top and then you have another entrance. You walk in up here and it's just like the top of the pyramid, not too much going on. Now the new part of the structure will be found in the back left or the back right. It's the archaeology zone. Fighting through the sadness here and making us a shovel, we're gonna need a brush and a shovel for this archaeology system. Over at the back of the structure, we're gonna find sand all over the ground. This is kind of showing us that like, hey, something's going on here, maybe you should check it out. Always, no matter what, there should be one sus sand located on the surface here. It's kind of like the start of the big dig. We move over to it and please, oh yes, immediately we get one of the good things here. From the desert pyramid, you can find a couple different things. There are four different shirts, two different wonderful precious things, and then bomb making supplies. Bun. This is enough explosives, gunpowder TNT for me today. At the back of the desert pyramid, after you find the one sus sand that's on the surface, it's time to start cracking down into this thing. The best way to do it is find the staircase, which is going to be symbolized by like a couple sand in a straight line near the back of the room and start digging down. When digging this out, you might find a little bit of sandstone in your way, so you might have to like mine that out as well. But other than the random sandstone that'll be in the way, this room is always going to be the same shape, whether it's on the left or the right. It'll just be mirrored. Now carefully and slowly, we'll move into this thing. Now after that, because the stuff will fall and smash, shatter into a million pieces, we work from the top down. Please be a different shirt. Different shirt? Oh, I think it is. We got skull, and we got miner. That's half of them. And that's where we hit goal number two of the day here. I would like to make a new challenge for the world. This is gonna be a little bit more of a long-term challenge though. I think it would be cool to try and collect all, what is it, like 20 or so different archeology span shards across the world. At one point, eventually, once we get near completion, maybe we build like a beautiful mansion or something, put a diamond in it, sure, why not? And yeah, kind of just flex all of the different archeology span pottery that we find across the world. Tell a story, do an adventure, sell the stuff for insane profits online, eBay or something, I don't know. We'll figure the rest out once we have it. So with archaeology, if you've never taken it out in your world, it's a game of patience. You take your time and you always, always, no matter what, work in like one column from the top all the way down. 
If a single sus block falls, then the sus block shatters and it's gone forever. Now this room with the archaeology stuff inside of this thing, I'm not gonna lie, for an archaeology system, this is maybe one of the best structures. I mean, you got the trail of ruins, which is way better. I guess you could get like armor trim from archaeology and everything like that. But like loot wise, value wise, you can find some pretty nice things here. And wow, oh, with the shards, I'm getting so lucky. That's our first double up of the day, the Wob shard. But wow, three out of the four from one structure. I can see it now when we find our second pyramid. We're done, boys, ladies, we'll pack it up. Patience, we take our time and slowly dig it out. Eventually, we're gonna find parts of the room that kind of like jut off into the wall. Unfortunately, we find the same pattern on the floor, but if I were to like dig this out or anything like that, it's nothing, it's all sandstone below. That's the bottom of the temple. Now please, get, get a little bit lucky here. Diamonds, okay, sure, valid, I'll take it. That'll be the third diamond of the day. One of the easiest, safest ways to find a diamond, but please, no, no, I had enough of that. I don't wanna see any of that. <laughs> that makes me nervous. The thought of it, the mere thought inside of it, sends shivers and trembles through my bones. Now for this room right here, I think unfortunately, sad music, it begins to roll because we have found the end of the room. That's gonna be it. We don't have all the shards here today, but we have a fully excavated and dug out room. When you're done with it, left or right, it'll look something like this. And for the desert pyramid, an ancient structure, unfortunately, that's just about it. I really was hoping when they were updating the structure in 1.20 that they would add like maybe pots sitting around inside of the structure or like maybe double up on the room. Why not, after all, have like a lot of archaeology going on this ancient structure, but like, nah, you're just gonna have one archaeology room, a little bit of loot in the middle, and a cool build. If you're looking for a quick and easy base, like maybe you spawn inside of the mangrove swamp biome over there, you find the desert temple right away, day number two, you could set this thing up, add a couple doors to it, and have a pretty sweet, easy starter base. Now from this thing right here, we've got the village. We kind of already looted and raided the village, and check that one out. What I haven't checked out is the rest of the desert. I'm not too sure if this is gonna be a big, expansive desert. Sure hope it will be. But the easiest way to find it out is find the tallest hill in this area, probably this one, or maybe in that one right there, climb up top and take a look around. Hopefully from the top of this hill right here, I'll be able to find a second desert temple and a desert well as well. Oh, second desert temple. You're beautiful, I love you so much. It better not happen again. Before we go too far, I suppose, a quick archeology span recap from structure number one. I think this is all of the loot that I got, plus a whole bunch of sand. All right, so next up, for the Golden Desert Temple, we're gonna move right into the structure and do what you should do. What you should do right away every single time, get into the zinc and get to the loot. And actually, wow, that's the perfect desert temple, perfectly sitting right up on the surface, no digging required. So anyways, we move into this thing, quick left, quick right, no creepers, we dig this block out and fall. You got a stone pressure plate, if you drop an item on it, nothing happens. Don't step on it, remove it right away. Now after that, it's time for the treasure. Oh, treasure, sweet treasure. We'll start right here. We got four chests. The loot inside of every chest can be potentially the same. The best thing you can find. Oh, the best thing you can find at all. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. My long lost friend, the Dune Armor Trim. Every single time you find armor trim inside of this structure, even better, there's gonna be not one, but two. The devs are showing off that like, when you use one of these things, it's used up. Oh, that's, uh, that's beautiful armor trim. I love it so much. And actually, I didn't even see it, I was distracted. The second to best loot you can find inside of this structure, a golden apple. You can find horse armor as well and a lot of other junk and enchantments eventually too. Once the experimental stuff comes out of experimental, the villager changes, you'll be able to find unbreaking a little bit easier inside of this structure. I don't have that in this world quite yet, but oh yes, yes, yes. You can find armor trim in more than one chest. Right there, that's a full set of armor trim. Or at the least, that's like a helmet. Leggings, boots, something like that. <laughs> I'm so happy. This is wonderful. That was my big goal for the day. Check done out of the way. Now we got a lot of other loot here that I'm definitely gonna pull out of this structure, but really quick, we have even more loot, except this time it's inside of the world, like physical loot. TNT explosives, a nine by nine right there. Recommend taking it every single time you find this thing. Then we got extra blocks right there too. Maybe rip out all the walls and make a staircase back up, or just tower them. Loot, loot, sweet, wonderful loot. We get to break every single chest now and take it all. It's all mine. Even though my inventory is full of a lot of junk right now that I could probably do without, this is the exact example as to why we not only need an inventory update, but also you should bring something to expand your inventory with. I mean, look at this. I'm already so clogged. Now, archaeology, other cool things going on down here, there's none of it. It's just treasure and a little bit of explosives. Huh. Well, 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 that's rather cursed looking. 
potentially a, a sign of terrible things to happen. So before we do anything else inside of this temple, we move up top and make sure it's nice and bright. Don't want any mobs uh, anywhere spawning and blowing me up. So this stunningly perfect desert pyramid that we found right here is actually different. It's the other variant than the one that we just found. On the one that we just found, the excavation room is in the back left. Now it's going to be over here in the back right. First things first, we look around for the sus block on the surface. Now really, ideally here, if I could find, of course, more diamonds, that'd be beautiful. But I'm missing one single shirt. If I could find the other shirt, well, my day would be made. Now this time, let's flip it and go layer by layer here. We could start by digging out the surface layer of all the sand, then we could pick a corner, like say maybe this one right there. If you're not vibing with potentially risking it on that first layer when you're breaking into this room, like removing the staircase, pick a corner, and dig straight down, and then start in the corner. Oh, Emerald, I don't think I got one from archaeology yet. Yeah, you come with me, wonderful. After that, we can go ahead and work our way out from this one single corner, making sure we don't break any more sus sand, and taking our time. You see, archaeology, it's not about the treasure always, definitely not always. Instead, sometimes it's about the story, the adventure, the tale that you tell along the way. Aww. The sus sand, sweet dear wonderful sand, give me the shard that I am missing. Is this the shard that I'm missing? It could be. I don't remember for sure. Oh, I think it is. I feel like that's the shard I'm missing. But there's only one thing we can do, and that is finish unboxing the whole present right here, the prize. And then I'll be able to check at the end. But I'm like 90% sure it is. Let's do this. And so final drum roll here, I think I've done it. I think yes, that is the last of it. The entire structure fully excavated right there. The real moment of truth is upon us though. Inside of the ender chest, we got everything. We throw the shirt right there, that's it. The applause, the cheers, oh, you're, you guys are always way too kind to me. Yes, it's an exciting moment, a beautiful one. Every single shirt from the Desert Pyramid is checked on, done so us off the list. With such a beautiful structure, fully structured and excavated, it's time to move on. All we need to do is run around this desert for a little bit more time and hopefully get a little bit luckier. The next structure that we're looking for, it's called the Desert Well. And it's really, really, well, I was gonna say it's really, really rare, but nah, maybe it's like more so just like really, really small, so it's a little bit hard to find. You see, if you didn't catch the vibe here with the desert, Everything is sand, which means it all blends in. Desert wells can sometimes be buried, but typically they'll be sitting up on the surface. Wow, there's some crazy cool looking caves over here too. Like that's gotta be lava or something down there. We got a village over there, that's wonderful. I think we maybe caught a glimpse of that before. And I don't know if I wanna go there today. And ooh, something cool in the Badlands too. I am the king of the hill, I am the king of the hill, looking around at the desert here. I need to scan every single block intensely and deeply until I can find a well. It's a small shaped structure, looks like a well or something, believe it or not. And I don't think I see a single one anywhere. Oh man. But defeat, no, it's not an option. Instead, we move over to an even higher peak. A higher peak at a different altitude where we can get a completely different view and check even more blocks. And maybe, just maybe, on the distant horizon, I'll be able to find a well or a village with a second camel or a patrol. That would work too. <clears throat> All right, so my mountain looking thing, it doesn't seem to be working. The scheme sometimes is a little flawed. Uh, other than that, I think what we're gonna be left with is the option number two, which is run around on the floor of the desert and see what we can find. Uh-oh, that doesn't look too good. Run around on the floor of the desert and see what we can find. Up here on the top of the hill, I haven't really seen this part. You never know, there could be a well somewhere over there, but that's not the desert in the distance, and that's not the desert, and that's definitely not the desert either. It seems that I might have struck the very end of the desert over here. It's a little bit smaller than I thought. There's even more crazy cave situations going on inside of this desert. This one looks particularly really, really deep here, but unfortunately, no well. But I've been scheming here. I think my next move is to backtrack through the desert this way. After all, I haven't seen it up close and personal quite yet. And get over to that giant Badlands mountain. Kind of like, you know, like relatively close to our nether portal situation. From up there, because that mountain was so tall. And hopefully, I'll be able to see if there's any more desert. Like, say, on the other side of the Badlands, or the jungle that's over there, or, you know, anything like that. 12 seconds later. Alright, so, up on top of one of these Badland mountains over here, we look around and we find some beautiful things up close, but I don't really see any desert wells sticking up in the distance or anything. 
However, when I was imagining the Badlands Mountain, I didn't really imagine this one. I was kind of more so thinking that one. That one's really, really tall, and I feel like the view from up there is going to be absolutely amazing. I'm super curious what's on the other side of that mountain, too, so I think I'm going to get down this mountain, get across this river, and climb up this mountain. And then we'll see. For real. Wow, this terrain generation is beautiful up here. Not only is this like grass color inside of the biome, really evil and cool looking, the coarse dirt everywhere, but then like this right here, wow, I don't know if I've ever seen a more beautiful looking Badlands. Up here on top of the mountain, I see the world's biggest forest and a whole lot more Badlands all over the place. I upped my render distance all the way up to 58 chunks so I can see as far as possible. And so far, lads, I don't know, that's the desert we came from over there. It's not really looking too sandy over here. Like over there, it's actually the exact opposite that we need, a plain old forest. Over there, it's warm, but that looks like it's really far away. Maybe when I have an elytra, I'll come back over there. That way, oh, mm-hmm, that way there's some sand, okay. And, oh, that way there's a desert village. That way there's a desert village, you know what that means. <gasps> Camelotl, I have to, for Camelotl. Yeah, 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 but hold up, hold up, hold up. Really quick, one small sidetrack. Super quick, ah, terracotta. I don't know what today's bonus build is quite yet, but maybe it could involve terracotta. At the least, I'd like to get a little bit of this. Maybe a couple stacks. And while we're at it, oh, that could have been bad. That could, that could have been real bad. Hey, I mean, what do they say? Don't dig straight down? Yeah, something like that. A tiny bit of terracotta digging later and no falling straight down and we've made him. The end goal, the big destination for today's video. What's going on here? That's pretty weird. Huh. Anyways, the destination. Inside of this place, it's a desert village. It's brand new and it's also a little bit strange with like that tree there. This is really, really cool. It's like a... Like an island isolated, that's awesome. But inside of this village, there is only one thing that I need. I mean, I guess kind of two. I would love to have the cats, but you. Sweet, wonderful friend, you. Saddle, and you come with me. Looking around the rest of this village, it is, sure, definitely a beautiful and wonderful place. And I'm sure there's other treasures that could be had and treasures that could be stolen. But my inventory in the e-chest is a little bit full. Hey, but hold up, hold up, really quick, just in case. Uh, hey! A second saddle. Exactly. Always check the chests, especially in that building. Whew, that's a clean yeet. Now, uh, real quick here, to get back home sweet home, I think what I'm going to do with this camel is the same thing that I did with Camelot. I'm going to go ahead and put the camel on a lead and then sit in a boat and sail. By putting the camel on the lead behind us, we can easily drag it across the ocean and water, making transportation way, way quicker. Hey, now also here, by the way, because this camel is so big and the nether is so small, like the hallway that I have built and everything like that, I'm going to take it back home via the ocean. It is going to be a little bit longer, but then I'll have to dig out like a bunch of blocks and make a huge tunnel. Now also wells. It's a little bit of a bummer that we weren't able to find one inside of our world here today, and for our archaeology shard quest, that's gonna make things difficult. It's a problem that we'll have to address later on, but the desert well. The desert well is the other desert archaeology site that you can find. When you find this thing, you're gonna have water inside of it, so somehow you're gonna wanna remove all the water. Pull the water out and you'll be able to find sus sand on the floor. You go ahead and brush the sus sand away and you'll find even more different shirts than you can find inside of the desert temple. It's pretty cool. The loot table for this dig site is different and to be honest, is a little bit less good. You'll be able to find emeralds here, sus too, and some shirts, as well as trash. As you can see here though, they kind of blend in with the desert as a whole, making them a little bit trickier to find. If you can find one, don't forget to stop and check it out. Back over at home sweet home, today my friends, we made out pretty well. Like look at this thing, we got a brand new beautiful camel. The second one, Camelotl, you're so excited, I know. We can actually go ahead and put a saddle back on you. We'll take this other saddle from you, and then you, you need, you need to follow me. We're gonna go ahead and put you inside of the same hole as Camelotl for now. I promise, I guarantee it. 
100% look, before too long, I will build you a much bigger, much more beautiful home. It's just, you see, times are tight right now. Yeah, that's it. Financially, economically, times are tight. I won't be able to build that right now, but we could take a look at all of this sweet and beautiful loot from today's adventure. So many shards is beautiful. And even armor trim as well. I'm also coming out of this build today with a whole lot of terracotta. And speaking of terracotta, it's time for the bonus build. Uh, uh guys God. no joke right now i'm terrified i i don't know what's going on i'm building in the game clearly but i seem to have like lost all thought and control i i swear i'm building this but i i'm really i'm really not i don't even know what's going on and it's hard to explain i'm just really confused anyways today's comment to the day is a beautiful genius mind-blowing life hack about oxidizing copper when i saw this my jaw it was sent not only to the floor, but clean through it. Oxidize the copper first, and then cut the copper. Oh, you're so smart. Oh no, oh, oh no, I, I, I can't believe this happened. Something took control of me. It, it must have been him. He built a statue using me as a vessel. And even worse, the statue sits, sits right there. This is not good. I do gotta say, though, that's a pretty fire-looking parrot statue. Ah, this... I mean, it's not bad. I feel terrible for saying that. In a move that is long overdue, laddies. Now that we found so much armor trim, I have to do it. Now, technically speaking, the armor trim that we found today is not the first armor trim in the world. We actually found more inside of the stronghold way, way back when. However, today, for the very first time, as the rain sets in, almost an ominous sign of that statue or something. Uh, anyways, as the rain sets in, it's time we take a look at armor trim. Really, really quick. So armor trim, it's obviously a mechanic that was added in Minecraft 1.20. Unfortunately, armor trim is entirely aesthetic. It doesn't actually like change anything about your armor. Now using armor trim is so straightforward. Inside of the smithing table, slot number one is gonna go the armor trim itself. Slot number two is going to go a piece of armor. It could be any piece. Slot number three is going to be a trimming material. Then over here, we get a preview of what this trim would look like if I decide to take it in survival. Now, look, that is beautiful looking. It looks really, really nice. However, I want to save the chest plate for something else. And I also like the idea of putting different trim on every single piece of armor. So we need to think strategically here. Which one should I trim? Those are kind of fire looking. Now, if we swap the material out, we're going to get a different color. Like, we do gold on diamond, which I really, really like. Or we could maybe do, like, netherite on diamond. Red and blue. That's a nice combo, too. But to be honest, I think gold and diamond is pretty fire. That's a nice looking thing. Now, as soon as we go ahead and take this right here, watch this. The trim is gone, and we get an advancement instead. So armor trims, they're kind of like a single-use item, unfortunately. Now, for the armor trim inside of this world, for our set right here, eventually we'll upgrade this to netherite. But I was thinking that maybe every single piece of armor should be, like, trimmed with a different pattern. Kind of from, like, all over the world. We got the leggings that match my cuffs, so I think that's pretty cool. Back over the old base, we got another piece of armor trim. I kind of forgot it earlier, so I'll go back over in between episodes or something and pick it up. Anyways, Bonzo, the return of Bird, and of course, obviously, desert treasure hunting and archaeology. That's just about it for this episode. Thank you all so much for watching. Smash like and subscribe for early access to the episodes. Check out the Patreon for world downloads. Become a channel member today. This has been me, Waddles, and I will see you all in the... Hey, oh, hold on. I mean, realistically, how could I? How... I, I can't end the episode without making a single pot. Who do you think I am? So the whole point and the purpose of this archaeology system, it's all aesthetics and decoration. Kind of just like the armature. I guess that was a big theme for 1.20. With the help of a little bit of bricks inside of the table, we can swing over to a crafting table, place bricks inside of the table like that, and then a shard or shards, multiple ones, just like that, and we're going to be able to make a decorated pot. Now what I was thinking, my vision here for these pots is maybe we put something cool on the front, and then on the other side, we just leave them blank. So then I can, like, not have to, like, use these shirts up. Because once you use one, well, you use it. Like, you can't clone them. You could also make these giant pots out of solely just bricks or entirely out of shirts. It's pretty cool. The shirt that you put in the bottom is always going to be the front side of the pot. So keep that in mind. The wild thing here is this recipe. So that's a whole giant pot, and this is now only one pot. That's insane. This should be, like, three pots or something now. That makes no sense. 
Crazy recipes aside, anyways, pots. Pots are a beautiful decorational item. We can go ahead and move outside of our house right here and say, I don't know, maybe, maybe move the grass forward, place a pot right there, and beautiful. The grass is in the way. Let's try that one more time. We hit this thing with any tool and it shatters into a bunch of pieces. And then we have to go over to the crafting table and recraft it. If you break it with your hand, you'll get the pot back. You get the pot, you place the pot, and then maybe on top of the pot, cool little build trick, you put another pot. Then you can put a flower inside of it and whew, that's beautiful looking. Ha <laughs> ha, just what Bonzo always wanted. Speaking of Bonzo, let's spice up the porch with that. I don't know, maybe that one. This road over here, we can make it feel even more cozy by placing a pot and maybe putting, I don't know, that one in it. And then, heck, why not? Next to the Statue of the Champions, maybe that one. With a cactus inside of it, too. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.